there's a prophet. God created you for a purpose. And that purpose must come to pass. Enough is enough. Stand up. Leave them behind. Tell them I'm going somewhere. Somebody is holding a position on the right on a camp. Somebody here must go home with a blessing. I will overtake them. I will overtake them. Do you believe that? Shout hallelujah. Right in you with the hope of God. Behold, I give unto you power. What a mighty God we serve. This God is too much. And it's so big that the whole world cannot contain him because he's the creator of the whole universe. Do you have any problem? Come around. You will know that he can solve any problem. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you and will love you too. I am Dr. Mercy Ezekiel. I welcome you to the hour of grace. And I want you to know that you are blessed because you are somebody. We love you. Mark chapter 4 verses 5 and 6 Pastor read And some fell on a stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up but it had no depth of earth but when the sun was up it was scorched and because it has no root, it withered away. Nigeria, congratulations. 54 years is not 54 days. But it's very unfortunate that at age of 54 as a nation, you are still in a shallow mind. So I want to speak to you on shallow mind, on shallow heart, on shallow understanding, on shallow faith, on shallow soul. This is a special message for this anniversary, 54 years anniversary. You can be seated. I will give you three lessons you will receive to mark this anniversary. And the topic is shallow mind. It's amazing that after 54 years as a nation we are still rolling around with a shallow mind three lessons number one the shallow mindedness of our leaders the shallow mindedness of our leaders both traditional leaders and political leaders. Daniel chapter 5. I want you not to switch off this tele television. Keep it on. And listen to me. I will not so much delay you. But it's very important that you listen to this anniversary message. Daniel chapter 5 and verse 5. The whole chapter is in the message, but I want to condense it to verse 5. Read, Pastor. In the same hour, the same hour, came forth fingers of a man's hand, came forth fingers of a man's hand, and wrote over against the candlestick, and wrote over the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand 
The king saw the part of the hand that wrote. That wrote. Go down and read what the hand wrote. Read on. Then the king's countenance mm -hmm. was changed, and his thought troubled him, so that the joint of his loin were loosed, and his nails smote one against another. And the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing. They could not read the handwriting of God. You can read it. Nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. How much more to interpret the handwriting of God? Then was the king Belshazzar greatly troubled, mm -hmm. and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now, the queen, by the reason of the wounds of the, of the words of the king uh -huh. and his lord, came into the banquet, banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thought trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom. There is a man in the kingdom. In whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In him the spirit of the holy God. In the days of thy father. In the days of your father. Light and understanding and wisdom. Yeah. Like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. Was found in him. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the mm -hmm. king, I say, thy father, mm -hmm. made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpretation of dreams, and showing of hard sentence, and dissolving of doubts, was found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let, king, let Daniel be called, and he will show the king the interpretation. He will show the king the interpretation. Stop there. I don't know whether our leaders, if they can read this in the Bible, our traditional leaders and political leaders, listen to me and all you citizens of Nigeria, and all you that are hearing me far or near, 54 years of a shallow heart, is unfortunate. Can I speak to you, our leaders, with all humility? Many of you are jogging again to go to State House and to your post come 2015. Can I say to you as a servant of God, I'm sorry for some of you, for you may not see that post again. Because there's handwriting against you. You have not learned your lesson from your predecessors. Here is a man, Belshazzar. The father was a king, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar ruled with a big head. When he saw the kingdom, he said, Is it not the kingdom I built with my hand? And pride came upon him. At that moment, God of heaven loosed a knot from his head. And he received the beast heart. The heart of a beast was implanted in him. And he jumped into the forest. 
and stayed there for seven years. All the animals in the forest saw him. They were surprised. But God told them, don't, don't kill him. He is with you to learn a lesson. Chimpanzee, monkey, they have never seen such a, 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 an animal in their kingdom. This is a special one. And when the son of this king Nebuchadnezzar took on the throne, he did not learn any lesson from his father. Likewise, you politician, you never learn a lesson. You have never learned any lesson from the past politicians. You are going the same way, perhaps. Maybe not all of you, but I don't know how many of you can escape. Beshazzar did not learn any, any lesson from his father. So, he ordered holy cups. The father captured. And said, bring me those cups which was brought from the house of God. And they brought it to him. He was drinking in, with that cup with his concubines and friends. No respect to God. No fear of God. Because he has climbed the throne. As he was drinking and making merry with his concubines, short hand was given to him. A hand not the whole hand, just a hand, was written on the wall. He has never seen such a thing before. Can I tell you, politicians and our leaders, God is no respecter of person. You have not learned your lesson from your predecessors. And you are in it again. Many politicians died in this nation because of love of money. They were overthrown. Government after government. And you are coming up. You have never learned your lesson. Wait the short hand of God. You are warming up to get that post 2015. May God spare your life. Some of you may not see it. I prophesy to you as a servant of God. With your big head, you may not see it. I am not wishing you any bad. But the scriptures cannot be broken. Heaven and earth can pass away. Unless you fear God and repent. If not, you shall likewise perish. Traditional rulers and political leaders. Hear me. What is making you to have a big head? Thinking that that post is your forever inheritance. God put you there. He can take you away. I don't know what is your vision of aiming to be there. What is in your mind? Your mind is to have power to amass wealth. Huh. One head of state in this nation secured the post. Amass wealth like crazy. And when he died, it was a miserable dead. Of course, I want to confess. I told my ministers, I said, this man, he'll be removed. They said, eh? I said, watch. He'll be removed. How? I said, not by gun. Because if you shoot him in the front, you can't catch him. And shooting him at the back is very difficult. I said, he will die a miserable death. They were looking at me. 
I said, mark what I said. And you remember how he died. A miserable death. I'm not mocking him, but I must be very frank. He disgraced that post. He died a miserable death. The day they were about to put him in the airplane, they were trying to lodge him at luggage section. I was watching it at television. One man said, Haba, put him where human beings used to sit. Why are you putting him in a luggage section? My friend, leaders, if God handle you, he will disgrace you. Repent! God put you there. Not by your own power. But if you abuse that post, one, I fear whether you will see 2015. Secondly, even though you see it, I don't know how long you will last. Hear me! You may be annoyed if you are not, if you repent, God will forgive you. If not, get ready. For there is handwritten on the wall. When this king was pompous, drinking with God's property, the handwriting appeared on the wall, which said, Mene, Mene, take care of us. The king did not understand the language. So he called his necromancers and magicians to come and interpret the handwriting, the shorthand of God. They came, they said, Oh, king, we are not able. You leaders, who said there will be? If God happened to take shorthand for you, nobody can interpret it. You will only see the result. And I'm sorry that the result may not be good for you. So the only thing you want to do now, don't have a shallow mind. Let your mind receive the word of God and be rooted. And nobody could interpret that handwriting. The king was miserable. And the queen came in and saw the king jittering. He said, Oh, king, chill. There's a man in your country with an excellent spirit. In the time of your father, he interpreted everything to your father. And Beshazzar called Daniel. When Daniel came, and writing, Mene, Mene, take care of us. Before he could interpret it, he said to Beshadda the king, that leader, that, that king, I say you may be a traditional leader, you may be a political leader, it doesn't matter. God is no respecter of person. Daniel said, Oh Beshadda, you have not learned any lesson. From your father. Your father developed a big head because of his post. And God made him to be a human monkey. And you have not learned your lesson. Oh, king, let me read the handwriting of God. Mene, Mene, take care of us. Meaning, God weigh you on the scale. And you came weighing nothing. And your kingdom is numbered. Your kingdom will be taken away from you no matter how. Oh, king, you never learn your lesson. And I'm saying to all our leaders, oh, my beloved leaders, traditional leaders, political leaders, whatever may be your post, Oh, you never learn your lesson. You are still jogging again to occupy that seat. My friend, let God tell you what to do. 
But mene mene. If not, it will be written again. Your days are numbered. You can't toy with this nation, Nigeria. God is the governor among this nation. There's nothing you can do because God's children are still here. We are the salt of this nation. We are the light of this nation. As long as we are here, no nonsense will take place. Traditional and political leaders, take your time. Take your time. Whatever you are cooking, be very careful. Three points I will give you. The second one is ministers, preachers with a shallow heart. Maybe you're a pastor or whatever, Alpha. Whatever may be your spiritual position. And your heart is a shallow heart. Read for me, please. John 3, verse 10, quickly. Let me show you what you are doing. John chapter 3, hear ye the word of the Lord. Jesus answered and said unto him. Jesus answered and said unto him. Art thou a master of Israel? Art thou a pastor? Art thou a father? The whole thing is from verse 1. Written verse 10 now. So, because Jesus told him, Man, you came to me. How, when did he come to Jesus? By, by night. Showing the condition of his heart. He had a, a black night heart. The heart was dark. He came to Jesus and said to Jesus, Rabbi, no man can do this miracle unless it's from God. Jesus looked at him and said, Minister, Rabbi, teacher, except you are born again, you can see the kingdom. And the man was surprised. How can a man be born again when he is old? And Jesus says something in verse 10. Read that verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto him. Jesus answered and said unto him. Are thou a master of Israel? Are thou a teacher in Israel? Are thou a teacher in Nigeria? Are thou a teacher in that place of worship? Are thou a teacher? Go ahead. And know it not these things. And you know not these things. Verily I say. Verily I say. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh -huh. we speak that we know. We speak that we know. And testify that we have seen. Shallow preachers. Shallow-minded preachers. You are behind the podium. You are behind the pulpit without knowing the meaning of born again. You better go down. Please. You are disgracing the gospel. Except you are born again, you can't preach this word. You can't see God you are calling up for. Unless you are born again. But the man said, how can a man like me be born again? Shall I enter into my mother's womb again and be born again? This is a question of shallow heart. And Jesus answered him and said, What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Preachers, don't take it as a profession. It's a call. If God has not called you to preach good news, go and do another thing. Because you are heaping cold of fire upon yourself. You are preaching God whom you don't know. Read more. I say unto thee, mm -hmm. we speak that we do know uh -huh. and testify that we have seen uh -huh. 
and you receive not our witness mm -hmm. if i have told you earthly things and you believe not how shall you believe if i tell you of the heavenly things jesus finally said to him we speak on what we know you worship what you don't know preacher do you know whom you are preaching about do you know what this bible says many will come on the last day and say master master we preach we do this we do that even we perform miracles but jesus will say you did all the things you st stood before the podium you are standing before a congregation prisoners of hope i don't know you what a shame they don't know the meaning of born again because their heart is shallow. If you don't have a heart rooted and grounded, you can't preach Jesus. Go back to Sunday school. Begin again until you are qualified. Preach it! Don't take it as a profession. Don't say when two or three are gathered. Not every two or three gathered. Not every time God will be with them. You may gather as you like. And Jesus will never even come to that place. You will lock him out of the door. Preachers! Are you a shallow preacher? Are, are you a called preacher it will be a tragedy that at the end of your struggle you don't know whom you are serving shallow traditional rulers shallow minded leaders shallow minded preachers I give you one more then I will center on what I want to center. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Shallow minded worshippers. Not everybody in the church or anywhere you are worshipping are worshippers. Shallow minded worshippers. This is 54th anniversary of Nigeria freedom. And you are worshipping without knowing whom you are worshipping. John 4.23, read. But the hour comment. The hour comment. And now is. Do you hear that? Now is that hour. When the true worshippers. When the true worshippers, because they are false worshippers shall worship the father in spirit shall worship the father in spirit and in truth and in truth for the father seeketh such the father seeketh such to worship him to worship him those of you who are hearing me what kind of worship are you shallow worshipers amen amen hallelujah seven times what kind of God are you worshipping? You are worshipping what you don't know. Let me assure you that the hour is now. Those that will worship God must worship Him in truth and the spirit. Those of you who are worshipping what they don't know you will be like your God. Do you know how your God is? 
that is how you are you will be your god is like idol with hand he can't touch anything with eyes he can see with mouth he can talk with leg he can walk some people even our they are tying their god on their waist they go to secret places to fortify themselves I say unto you now, listen to me. You that patronize secret calls, if time is not taken, you may not escape this time. You will be like your shrine. You will be like that your idol God. You are worshipping what you don't know. It is a slogan that any time like this, some politicians will fortify themselves. Go and buy human parts to make juju. Can I say unto you, those of you who, who will try it, or you are trying it, or you have it, you will never succeed. Yeah. Never. If you have any such a thing in your cupboard, unless you repent, you will have yourself to blame. To blame what? You may not see 2015. For every idol in this nation, we run. We are praying. Our prayer will never be in vain. There will be a wave of repentance in this nation. I don't know how God will do it. But God, whom we serve, will answer us by fire. Yeah. You don't know whom you are worshipping. It is written. Those that will worship God must worship Him in the truth. Let me explain more. In truth, Jesus Christ is the truth. You must worship God in Christ. If you don't have Jesus, your worship is in vain. You are like Belshazzar. Who is boasting? I never know who is worshiping. You are like bell worshippers. Elijah challenged them. Say, enough is enough. Why are you deceiving my people? Any God who answers by fire, let him be God. He challenged them to the mount of contest. Come over to Mount Carmel. Anyone that answers by fire, let him be God. They accepted the challenge of the man of God. And went up. I have had some experience with these politicians. They came to me for prayers. It is only that time they will come for prayer. But any other time they pursue what they are pursuing. One came to me in my office some years ago. He wanted to get prayer to fortify himself. I look at him. First of all, I say, Mister, no matter what you do, you cannot succeed. You are not called to this post. In my office. He said, eh? I say, please, 
If you have any petty business you are doing, go back. You can't succeed. And he obeyed me and went back. He would have wasted his money in vain. One also came to me. I'm not saying all these things for any reason. But for you to see the vanities of human beings. Shallow mind. He came to me and said, pray for us. Pray for my party. I said, which party do you belong to? I don't care about party. There are only two parties I know. The party of light and party of darkness. Which one do you belong to? He called me the name of the party. I said, who is your leader? He called me. He told me the leader. I said, do you know that you are a leader? Forget about it. He will never smell the throne of Nigeria even for five minutes. He said, what? It's a popular choice of everybody. He's a man of the people. He's the man we want. I said, do you come to me or you are saying what you want? If you have come to me, hear ye the word of the Lord. That your man will never smell the throne of this nation for five minutes. He said, what? I said, go and write it down. He went on to praise that I may pray. I said, I have told you. I won't pray. He is not a material. Even if he wallowed himself to get the, 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 the nomination, if he remain only five minutes for him to cry, he will give up. It has never he has never seen such a thing before. I say I know what I'm talking about. The word of God will never return back to God's void. I say you may see him as a champion. But before God is mene mene. Take care of us. He can't see. I don't know who you are. Listen to me. I don't see your face, but I'm seeing your mind. Your mind is shallow. Can I tell you again the finger of God? I'm not now only talking to the leaders, everyone. If your mind is a shallow mind, you are not worshipping God in Christ. You are worshipping God outside Christ. You are worshipping God in a religious way. What I mean by religion? Going to church without going to God. You are worshipping in vain. And it happened. They, he tried to persuade me to change what I said. I said, no, it's not my word. It will be so. I know whom I have received it from. Watch. Some of my co-ministers, they oppose me. They say, why are you saying like that? I say, I've told you. And when the result came out, they notify it. They cancel the result. Up to now, don't know this. But when God did not put somebody on the throne, you are struggling in vain. And finally, finally, it happened that he did not see the throne
You may not be a political leader, you may not be a king, you may not be a pastor with a shallow heart. Your own may be shallow worshippers. God is no respect of person. You may be in the church, the church of God, but you don't have the God of the church. I don't know what kind of heart you have. A shallow minded heart. Last Sunday I spoke about the stony heart. But if you read that chapter again or and verse, it says a shallow heart, a shallow mind. The seed fell, but no root. If the word of God is not grounded in you, you are going nowhere. We are about to see something in this nation. Watch. Nigerians, watch. I say, watch. 2015. I stop there. I don't know what we are thinking about 2015. I don't know what you have decided about that. But watch. God will do something that will surprise people. Until the time. But I say to you here, if you are here with a shallow heart, you are not worshipping God in truth. In Jesus. Why do we pray in Jesus' name? Because you must be in Him. If not, everything you are doing is shallow. Shallow mindedness. And in spirit. Well, I think I conclude with this. As I was telling you, those people who worship God in a shallow mindedness. Elijah said unto them, choose you this day. If God be God, follow him. If not, follow Baal. He challenged them on the Mount of Contest, the Mount Camel. And they accepted the challenge of the man of God. Let me assure you, I challenge you, if you think that this word of God you are hearing is fake, continue in your short mandates. And go to mountain to contest. Go to INEC and register ten times to win that election. If you don't win that election, you will not last long. And those of you who are worshipping here or elsewhere, if you don't have Jesus Christ, get ready. For you will be exposed in 2015. Those who will worship God must worship Him in truth and in spirit. God is seeking such to worship Him. God is looking about where are those people in Christ? Where are those people who are worshiping in the truth and spirit? God is looking for them. You can't be worshipping God in truth and still lie. You can worship God and lie. You can worship God and mammon. Time has come 
for those who, who are on, on the Lord's side to go into truth. A revival is coming. Personal revival, church revival. God will shake. He will shake. He has started shaking. God will shake. All unshakables will remain unshaken. But those who are shakables will be shaken off. I say unto you, time is come for those who are worshipping God must worship him in truth and in spirit. Are we not going to pray? We are going to pray. Are we not going to worship God in truth? We are going to worship God in truth. I want to warn you, those of you who are playing church, you are calling the name of God and you are indulging in sin. God will not tolerate it. God, I say God, according to the word of God, will chastise his people. It's a call for separation. You will worship God in truth. It happened in Moses' time. Who, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come. It happened in Elijah's time. If God be God, follow him. And I want to announce to you 2015 again, if you are ready, worship God in the truth. Not with a shallow mind. Not with a shallow heart. But with a heart rooted. Root means you have a, a root. And grounded. Grounded means you have DPC. You have a good foundation. If not, wind, 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 you may not understand. We come. I don't know why I'm talking like this. I don't know why. But permit me just to finish. Is there anybody here with a shallow mind? Jesus Christ, the truth is not in you. What is the essence of coming to church? You come and go as you come. That should not be. Today is a day of salvation. Now is acceptable time for those who will worship God. We will worship God in truth and in spirit. To all our leaders, handwriting is on the wall. Those of our preachers, you are preaching God you don't know. Those of you worshippers, you are worshipping what you don't know. But time has come for those who will do anything as a child of God. We do so in the truth and the spirit. Whosoever that has ear to hear, let him hear. But for you, you are blessed. Shall we pray? You are welcome back. I know you enjoy the word of God, which is life. And I know your life will never ever remain the same. After you must have had the word of God, please make best use of the word. Don't let your life be the same again. Because Jesus Christ is coming soon. Why don't you give your life to Jesus Christ? Today might be the only day you have. 
I call you to give your life to Jesus. And if you are sick, you are healed. We'll see you next week. Bye. Join Ms. Outreach of Christian Pentecostal Mission International under the apostolic and prophetic ministry of God's anointed servants, Rev. Dr. O. Ezekiel, the General Overseer, Rev. Dr. Mercy Ezekiel, Co-Pastor, National and International Coordinator, and other anointed servants of God, as they present Faith Clinic every Tuesday. At Faith Clinic, sinners become saints, the sick heal, the barren conceive, the oppressed are set free, the demon possessed delivered. Time, 9 a.m. Miss Outreach also extends love and antenatal health care prayer sessions for expectant mothers and pregnant women every Wednesday at 4 p.m. prompt. And also every Thursday at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for Business Commission, where men and women are commissioned with grace to succeed in business, career, family life, and so on. At Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. Please outrage, reaching out to the troubled souls. Don't miss it. CPR, Jesus Christ is Lord. God has a plan for you. A plan to give you a bright future. Come and experience expository teachings and a powerful prophetic breakthrough service this Sunday at Christian Pentecostal Mission International with God's anointed servants, Rev. Dr. O. Isakel, the General Overseer, Rev. Dr. Mercy Isakel, co pastor, national and international coordinator, and other anointed servants of God. Worship with us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. At Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street, Ajawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. You can also worship with any CPM International branch close to you. It will be a time of salvation, healing, deliverance in the presence of God. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord.